when you're looking for a job, you're looking for a job. You don't make choices. Some people do. Some very principled people make a decision not to work in the arms industry. But you go to a company because you're going to get paid and you're going to feed your wife and kids and whatever. But then when you get settled in, you get more confident. You then need doubt to say, well, why am I doing this? This is a story about when these workers' livelihoods were threatened and they came up with an alternative plan. And it's one of the most remarkable exercises that's ever occurred in uh, British industrial history. We thought that we have a very highly skilled, very competent workforce and we have the intelligence to devise or endeavour to solve the problems for ourselves. It's because it's a very small step to go from power generators on aircraft to wind turbines. A plan that's even more pertinent today. And you'll see things in there, cheap, efficient heating systems like heat pumps, hybrid engines for motor vehicles. What this corporate plan was saying was you make socially useful products and when we look at cutting back on defence, what could you do? with the skills that you've got, with the capital that you've got. What could you make if you weren't making that? If that had been spent on mass transit, heating system, solar power, wind generation, all of those sectors would provide more jobs. And it all happened 40 years ago. 150 alternative products developed from the shop floor for a more sustainable world. And if you think you can do that with the entrenched power structures you're up against, what we wanted to do was say, well, we'll go past management right down to shop floor and then it'll come up. <laughs> Obviously, you know, you're turning the world on its head. It's absolutely turning the world on its head.